What's the real difference between ACES and Resolve Color Management? Even if we understand these tools individually, most of us lack a clear and simple understanding of how they relate to each other. And as a result, we really don't know how to evaluate or choose between them. So today I'm gonna to show you how each system works inside DaVinci Resolve and how you can meaningfully evaluate the two so that you're choosing the best solution for your grades. All right, guys, it's time to get clear on what ACES is, what Resolve Color Management is, and how they relate to each other. So let's start by talking about ACES. And if you wanna go more in depth on ACES, I definitely recommend checking out my ACES Explained series. But for today, let's summarize ACES by saying that it is a color management framework. What's a color management framework? Well, a color management framework is simply a system that allows us to automatically transform what the camera saw into what our display can reproduce on an automatic basis. Okay, well, what does that look like? What does that mean? Well, let's take this timeline as an example and observe that we are looking at a bunch of log state images right now. They are in the original color space of the camera they were shot on, which is an Arri Alexa. And just to begin grading this, I need to get quite a bit of contrast and saturation introduced before I can even begin to make more finessed adjustments, right? Now, what I could do is go down to my primaries and start spinning wheels until I begin to get an acceptable result, but instead we are going to take a color management approach to solving this problem. So to do this, I'm gonna use ACES to start. I'm gonna to go to my file menu. I'm gonna to go to project settings. And then here under color management, I'm gonna to go to my color science dropdown menu. And instead of DaVinci YRGB, I'm going to select ACES CCT, okay? And you'll see when I do that I get a couple of additional options exposed to me down below that drop down menu that I'm going to fill in. So for my ACES input transform, this is simply asking me, what is the state of your image when you initially drop it onto this timeline? In this case, all of my images came from an Arri Alexa camera. So that's the input transform I'm going to select. Next, I have my ACES output transform. And all that this is asking is what display are you mastering for? What are you outputting to? And in my case, I am outputting to a Rec. 709 mastering monitor. So that's the option I'm going to select from this drop down menu. Now, pay attention to what happens to my image when I hit save. All of a sudden, I have a healthy level of contrast and saturation, right? And what's more, that's not just the case on this one shot. That's the case everywhere in my timeline. All of my log images have now been normalized. In other words, I have transformed what the camera saw, what the camera captured, the color space that it captured in, out to what my display can reproduce or that displays color space. So that is color management in a nutshell. And we've now seen the way that the ACES color management framework actually plays out here inside of Resolve. So where does Resolve Color Management come into the picture? Because right there in the name is the term color management. So we can now understand that Resolve Color Management is simply another color management framework, just like ACES. Okay, so why do we need two? Why do we even have this choice if the task is simply to transform what the camera saw into what my display can reproduce, and this is being done on an automatic and on a technical basis, why do I need two systems? Well, it turns out there are a number of different considerations in terms of the way you might set up a color management framework and ACES and Resolve Color Management simply represent two solutions to the same fundamental problem. So let's say instead of color managing with ACES, we want to color manage with Resolve Color Management. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm gonna to go to my file menu and I'm gonna to go to my project settings once again go over here to my color management. And now for my color science, instead of choosing ACES CCT, I'm gonna choose DaVinci YRGB Color Managed, which is how I select Resolve Color Management. Now we're gonna be presented here with some options that we need to navigate in a very specific way. The first thing that I want you to do, if you are new to Resolve Color Management, it's a bit counterintuitive, but I actually want you to turn off automatic color management because this automatic color management system actually conceals the very thing that we need to understand if we are going to begin using Resolve Color Management effectively. 
So I'm going to uncheck this box. And when I do, the menu that I have here for my color processing mode is going to change slightly. And again, just because I actually want us to get more of an explicit look under the hood, I'm going to go to this drop down menu and I'm going to scroll all the way down to custom. Now, all I've done by unchecking automatic color management and selecting custom for my color processing mode is given myself access to the full range of options that are available to me in Resolve Color Management should I wish to use them. Now, as you get more familiar with Resolve Color Management, these presets that we have here and even the more simplified presets that we will get when we enable automatic color management are there for you to use and you shouldn't be afraid of them. But for right now, we want to get familiar with the ground level of Resolve Color Management and how it contrasts with ACES. So let's explore the options that we have here and how they align and how they differ with the way we set things up in ACES. So first, our input color space. This is simply a different term for what ACES calls the ACES input transform. This is where we are telling the color management framework the color space of our original source. So in this case, once again, I'm going to go to this drop down, scroll up, and select Airy Log C because that is the color space of my images when I initially placed them in this timeline. Next, we have our output color space, which is a different term for what ACES calls the ACES output transform. And Rec 709 Gamma 24 is the same thing as what ACES calls Rec 709. So these two options relate one to one to options that we have when we are setting up an ACES color management workflow. Now, everything else that you see here, all of these other options, these are actually unique to Resolve Color Management. These are options that we don't have the ability to control when we are using ACES. So this is one of the first differences that we can point out about Resolve Color Management versus ACES is that the terminology is slightly different as we just saw, and also the user interface and the number of parameters that we have access to are different between ACES and Resolve Color Management. Now, one is not necessarily better than the other. It depends on the way you are working. If you're wanting to get a solid color management framework quickly and you don't know how you would want to do all of these settings here, ACES might be a good place to start, or you might choose to go to one of the preset modes that we skipped over for now when we initially got into Resolve Color Management here. But we do have additional options that we can control in Resolve Color Management if we want to. Okay, now here's the next key difference that we need to observe if we're talking about Resolve Color Management versus ACES. Right now, all I've done is change from ACES in my project settings over to Resolve Color Management, and we have set up an equivalent pipeline. So we still have an input of Aria Alexa. We still have an output of Rec. 709. So if I move my window over here to the right and I hit save, let's watch what happens to our image. It changes a bit, doesn't it? So even though I have two color management frameworks that are set up with equivalent settings and that are aimed at the same task of transforming what the camera saw into what the display can reproduce, I'm actually getting different visual reproductions. And this is a consideration that you should take into account when you are deciding whether you want to use ACES or Resolve Color Management in a particular grade, is you can flip through your entire timeline and evaluate which reproduction is closer to your creative intent right out of the box. If Resolve Color Management looks significantly better to you than what you're getting with ACES, that would be a completely valid reason to select Resolve Color Management. Or if the opposite was true, if you really liked what ACES was doing, that would be a completely valid reason for saying, hey, for this project, I'm going to use ACES. So those are some of the key differences between ACES and Resolve Color Management, as well as some of the ways in which they align and they fundamentally address the same challenges. And now that we've made this overview of the way that ACES and Resolve Color Management align and differ, let's go back to our project settings and explore some of the presets here inside of Resolve Color Management. Here's what I would actually encourage you to do if you are using color management for the first time or if you are using resolve color management for the first time. Rather than diving into the deep end with this custom mode, I would still leave automatic color management off, but I recommend that you go into your color processing mode 
and select HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. If you don't have explicit reason to choose something else, this is a great preset to select. And once you do, you'll see that that big long list of all those intimidating options has largely gone away, and all that we're left with is setting what we want our output color space to be. But there's one other parameter that even though it's not being revealed to us here any longer, we still need to make sure is properly set for every single clip if we want to get sound color management. And that is our input color space. So when you are using a preset like this one, HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, there's one other step that you need to take before your color management will be complete inside of Resolve Color Management. So let's hit save here in the project settings. And what we now need to do is go to our individual clip and right click and go to our input color space. And I need to make sure that that input color space matches that of my camera. So in this case, it's already in the proper position. It's already at area log C, but I need to make sure this is the case for every clip in my timeline. And I could of course go through and set this manually for each clip one by one, or if all of the shots in my timeline are in one color space as they are for me, I could hit Command A to select all of my clips, right click and set my input color space to area log C all in one stroke. And now I have completed my Resolve Color Management setup. So this is how I would recommend getting into Resolve Color Management if you're brand new to it, is to go into your project settings, go to your color management, select DaVinci YRGB Color Managed, turn your automatic color management off, turn your color processing mode to HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, set your output color space to Rec. 709 Gamma 24, assuming that is indeed what you are outputting to. In most cases, it will be. And then you can simply go to one of your clips or several of your clips at once, right click and make sure that your input color space is appropriately tagged. And the last thing that I'll point out, since we are right here on this input color space menu as a key distinction between ACES and Resolve Color Management is that the input color spaces that are available to us in ACES versus Resolve Color Management are actually not identical. And in some cases, you're gonna find that there's a preset for a particular camera here in Resolve Color Management that there is not inside of an ACES pipeline. So this could again be a completely valid reason for selecting Resolve Color Management over ACES. If your camera is not listed in the available input color spaces for ACES, you might indeed wanna go with Resolve Color Management so that you can ensure you're properly input mapping your material. And I wanna leave you guys with this because we've covered a lot of ground today. We've explored a lot of different options and color management can be a daunting subject at first. Ultimately, we wanna understand what ACES is, what Resolve Color Management is. We wanna be able to meaningfully evaluate the difference between one or the other, but just as important as any of those pieces is to commit to whatever color management framework you choose. You can get great results out of either color management framework. And once you've selected one, the worst thing that you can do is to constantly second guess at various points in your grade and go, oh, maybe I should have been in ACES instead of Resolve Color Management or vice versa. Once you have made your choice, stick with it. You're gonna learn more that way anyway, and you will be able to get great images because you're not constantly flipping things around and changing your reproduction, but rather focusing on your creative grading decisions within your chosen framework. At the end of the day, the choice between ACES and Resolve Color Management is a bit like the choice between two high-end cinema cameras. Both can net you great results and both merit exploration and testing rather than assumptions based on someone else's workflow or even what's worked for you in the past. Now, if you're new to color management or you're under a tight deadline, there's nothing wrong with sticking to what you know. Just remember that in the long run, building what you know is your most important task as a colorist.